Well, a very warm welcome to another vlog, a special vlog this time around from a very cold uh, Glencoe in the Highlands of Scotland. And yesterday uh, morning I drove um, exiting Wicklow through the Glen of the Downs. I always know I'm home or leaving home when I go through the Glen of the Downs and up to Belfast to catch the ferry across to Cairn Ryan and then the long drive and it was a long drive on a Sunday afternoon, lots of Sunday afternoon traffic out um, but I eventually made it uh, under the cloak of darkness uh, to Glencoe um, last night. So I've, I have the camper van with me and I stayed at the Glencoe uh, Ski Mountain and Ski Resort uh, last night. So I've decided this morning to explore the Glencoe area and a number of locations. The wind was forecast to be very low, but as you can see on Loch Nacalise here, there's a ripple there, which I wasn't expecting. Um, and this is part of Rannoch Moor as uh, this vast moorland um, lays beneath the mighty peaks of Glencoe. And there's beautiful little islands and the colour is starting to turn on the islands there. Yeah. I'm waiting for the rising sun. Uh, it's risen now, but it's not breaking through the clouds. And I'd love these clouds atop the hills here to light up and to add a little bit of drama to the scene. Um, it's not happening at the moment. Um, so, um, on to the next location. If that sun comes out, I'll put the photograph up and uh, we'll move on. Well, if there's one location in Glencoe that doesn't really need an introduction, it's this, that biscuit tin uh, image that is uh, well known. Um, this is a Black Rock cottage and I think it's uh, owned by the Women's Hiking Association here. Um, and it is a beautiful photograph. We have the cottage. We've got beautiful trees, a little bit of warmth in them and Buchel et of more in the background. What more could you want? The light is actually quite nice. It's illuminating the cottage. The buchel is in shade, a little bit of mist around it. And this is the uh, really the first notable photographic location after Rannoch Moor as you come into the Glen of Glencoe. Um, so I'm going to take one or two shots here. I might get the infrared camera out and give it a go because it might actually play well with that. The third location today is a little rapid um, that sits under uh, the Buchel et of Moor. Many of the standard images in Glencoe feature this iconic mountain. Um, this little rapid here, um, I think it's called the Cauldron, um, so it's a known location. Um, it's not easy to find, it, it requires a, a walk uphill uh, going south from the uh, King's House Hotel. Um, and then at one point you'll see a glimmer of water and you just cut down across the header for about 200 yards or so, not even that. 
um, and the scene is just incredible you know it provides a lovely little bit of foreground here um, a little rapid uh, with the I can see it's clouded over here now for the first time really today um, so but it is a nice little shot it'd be good to get it maybe early in the morning or for a sunset shot So spent the afternoon in very bright sunlight, um, just pottering around with the infrared camera. And um, I went down to the little um, cottage at Altnafak, and uh, it didn't look anything from the roadside. But when I got down, the infrared actually um, worked on the cottage insofar as there was no light on the cottage, but there was a beautiful light beyond the glen. Um, and that mix with the river um, it created quite a nice shot here. It looks good in the back of the camera. So um, a stag deer um, made its way across the road. So I ran back to the van, tried to get a longer lens out, and I took a distant shot of it. Um, so really that's how I've spent the afternoon in Glencoe, a very bright, harsh light. Um, I've come into a little pocket below the uh, bridge that as you enter into the Ralston Carn area. And there is a, well-known waterfall here which is usually view viewed from above now thanks to uh, one of the YouTube videos I watched before I came a big thanks to Cliff Hands so thanks Cliff for giving me the little uh, trick to get down underneath the bridge um, and it's a nice little shot you know there's lovely uh, birches um, and the colors turning but they're just too distant from either side of the waterfall to make a shot of it and the sky is best left out of it in a location like this because it would just be the very top of the frame. So I've taken a kind of an abstract image using the water flowing um, in the front here and the three or four little rapids of waterfalls coming down. Not much. Well, I continued down through the Glen of Glencoe and uh, I stopped off briefly at the Clagger Inn and a little bit of magic light was happening behind a few birch trees. So I took the opportunity to capture that light. Um, and I was um, planning on coming here, Glencoe Lochan, for sunset. It was tends to happen. Um, I got talking um, to Kevin. So Kevin, if you're watching this video, I know Kevin and his wife are on a two week trip to Scotland. So I hope you guys have a fantastic time. Um, so I popped it back into the van and made it down here as quickly as possible. Found the lake. The last of the light was hitting the mountains at the back. And although the lake, there was no direct light on the lake, the contrast between the light around the mountains and the stillness of the lake, the reflections in the lake. So that's the end of the first day in Glencoe. And I really enjoyed it. I'm tired now. So I've got to get back to the camper van, get a bite to eat and start planning tomorrow. Well, a bonus shot uh, was waiting for me as I uh, passed by Loch Leven on the way to my park up uh, in Glenetive. Um, the afterburn from the sunset um, provided faint illumination of beautiful individual clouds that stretched across the loch. Well, the temperature last night dropped to about minus five here in Glencoe and um, I decided to park up um, 20 yards away from this honeypot location. A beautiful uh, series of small rapids, very little water in it today and underneath uh, the buccal there and the morning light is just catching the mountain. Clear sky above um, but beautiful wispy cloud um, catching that morning light so um, freezing cold 
Uh, definitely a morning for uh, gloves, uh, hot cup of tea. Um, so I'm going to get busy here. I'm just looking, you know, in the opposite direction. And the birch are frozen here. So I may switch and do a little bit of more abstract photography before um, any warmth. And there's a little bit of frost on the grasses. So um, although this is the, the shot, the go-to shot, I think there's plenty around here to keep me busy for the next few hours. I'm absolutely delighted to meet the famous Gary Goff here. <laughs> and amazed. <laughs> and amazed. Uh, absolutely thrilled to bits, you know. So this this will hopefully get my subscribers up. What, what do you think? Past oh. two or three? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> I subscribe, by the way. I subscribe. Uh, one more subscriber. So that's fantastic. So delighted to meet Gary. Big fan of his channel. And uh, and there it is. On to the next location. We better get back taking photographs. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Well, I was a little bit starstruck after uh, meeting uh, Gary Goff, whose uh, YouTube videos on uh, photography I've been watching for many years now, and uh, a real gentleman. So there were a good number of uh, photographers in the area around the waterfall, and it's never easy to kind of relax and to pick your position and, uh, uh, and work the area as such. So I took a couple of shots, the mist on uh, Bougalette of Moor, was, um, oh, it was, it was just super, you know, a lovely bit of light catching it. So uh, it was a good call, I think, to spend the night here. Because in Glencoe, you have so many options. It, uh, indecisiveness is certainly something you have to deal with in a place like this. Um, so I moved on from the waterfall um, quite shortly after sunrise. And I noticed as the light was uh, strengthening, and it's a very, again, bright day today was backlighting uh, birch trees which are in the area. So I've moved across the hills um, using the frosted grasses as a foreground um, and took a number of shots of uh, these uh, backlit birch trees. And uh, I think I'm quite happy with one or two of those shots. And in many ways, I think I'd prefer them to the waterfall shot. Uh, so I'll put one or two of them up on uh, the screen now and we'll move on to the next location in the Sisyphus again, wherever that may be. Okay. Mm -hmm. 